Let's solve this question. This is about a certain theater where we have a total of 500 seats. Now, there are these three places where these seats are. There are some on the main floor. There are some in the first balcony and there are some in the second balcony. So, this is about all of the 500 seats and then the three types of seats that we have depending on where they are. So, main floor, first balcony, second balcony. Now, the price per ticket is different in these different different places. So if I think about the seats that are on the main floor, they sell for $50 each. So this is $50 for each seat here. Then if I think about the first floor, I can see that these seats sell for $45 each. It's cheaper than the main floor. Well, when you come to the second balcony, these are the cheapest seats where it is for $35 per seat. Now, when all of the tickets are sold for a certain performance, which means all 500 tickets are sold, then the gross revenue for that performance is $20,900. Now, this is something we will have to translate. We'll have to express this mathematically. Just suppose that this is the number of seats in each area. Let me just denote the number of seats on the main floor by M, the number of seats in the first balcony by F, and those in the second balcony by S. Then what is it that I can do to find the total revenue? Well, I'll simply have to find the revenue of each of these and add. So if I think about the main floor seats, then the total revenue that can come from here is 50M. Similarly, total from the first balcony, that's 45F, and it's 35S from here. So then the total revenue is 20,900, and this is when my total number of seats, which is M plus F plus S, all 500 of them are sold. So it's this speci specific situation in which I have the revenue. So here, this helped me create two equations. It's a system of equations, but I have three unknowns in it. So without jumping further into this, let's just read. There's still more that we haven't read. It says of the three seating areas, second balcony has the most seats. Okay, so this is actually helping us compare these three, the number of seats. It says that S is the greatest among these three numbers. So basically, S is greater than M also, and it's greater than F also. I'll just put a, put a comma and signify it this way. So this is the third thing we found here. Now, we have completely used up everything that was given to us. The information was not presented in a very complicated manner. Creating these equations really was the main thing, which is where you simply translated all of the information given into these. If you found the analysis of this data set helpful, then hit that like button so that other GMAT aspirants can also learn from it. And to stay tuned with such content, hit the subscribe button below. Now, to take your learning to the next level, we have put together a free trial in which you can experience content in all the sections tested on GMAT Focus Edition. For example, you can build your CR pre-thinking skills, you can learn how to approach statistics questions in graphics interpretation as part of DI, you can learn everything about linear inequalities as tested on the GMAT Focus Edition, and a lot of other content. The link for this is in the description. Now, let's get back to the question at hand. Now, let's just see what the question is asking and here we are. It says, select for first balcony, for the first column, a number of seats in this theater's first balcony. Basically, you have to find the value of F, the number of seats. And similarly, for second balcony, which is the second column, which I denoted by S, you will mark how many seats does the second balcony have. Okay, And all of this should obviously be consistent with the information we have. So essentially, now I have a goal also. I know my goal is to find the values of F and S from the table, two values which will work for me. Let's see. Let's think how we can do this. See, this is three unknowns and two equations. So there is a high likelihood that I will not be able to uniquely determine the values. That's why even the question stem, if you see, for the first balcony, we're selecting a number of seats in the first balcony. And here also, it's a number for the seats in the second balcony, such that these selections are consistent with the information. They're possible based on all of this information, not a unique number. Now think, if I'm interested in F and S, either I should be able to find values or some relationship between them, I have to get rid of this M so that I only and only get to focus on F and S. How you can do that is very simple. You can eliminate M from these two equations. How? Just multiply the second one by 50 and then since both of them will be 50 M, you'll be able to subtract. So essentially, the second one here is going to turn into 50 M plus 50 F plus 50 S and the right hand side, very simple calculations, 25,000. And I am keeping the first equation as is. When you do that, see how when you subtract, the two M's will cancel each other out. Let's show that to you here. And you will only be left with 5F plus 15S is equal to how much this is? 4,100. 
Now I see that we can further simplify this if I take 5 common. So I'll just do that. It's f plus 3s equal to 820. Perfect. Now at least I have a relationship between the two quantities that I am interested in. So here is my fourth relationship. And also between these two also this relationship is going to work that s is greater than f. So let me take these two things to the table and see how we can get to the values now. At this point, let me ask you this. Could you have arrived at the approach of solving this question with this level of clarity had you not spent the effort in thoroughly understanding the information presented? Such is the power of the process of owning the data set. And because this skill may not come naturally to many of you, we have created a course architecture that ensures that we teach you this skill through every guided quiz in the EGMAT DI course and we reinforce the same in every practice quiz. In fact, in the TPA quant modules in the two-part analysis course, we teach you how to get comfortable with this question type. You will gain the confidence to handle any question of this type in the most efficient manner. We serve more than 58 specially curated questions at the right progression so that you can learn various aspects of this question type, including the process skills of inference, translate and visualize. Thus, throughout the DI course, through around 500 questions, you will learn such process skills so that you can also comfortably use the owning the data set approach. Let's now get back to the solution at hand. Perfect, here we are. Now look, f plus 3s, two unknowns, one single equation, not a unique solution. I just have to see which pair of values will work here such that the pair satisfies both of these things, the equation and this constraint. Now, instead of directly jumping into every single value, there's something I see here. Look how this 3s, because of the 3, I am sure that this is a multiple of 3. While when I look at 820, this is not a multiple of 3. How do I know that? Simply add the digits. 10 is not divisible by 3. Think about it. What is it that I would have added to a multiple of 3 so that it turned into something which is not a multiple of 3? Think about it this way. What if f was also a multiple of 3? In that case, multiple of 3 plus multiple of 3 result would also have been a multiple of 3. So together, I can infer for sure that f is not a multiple of 3. And this helps me reject values here. Look at my table here. Look at all of the choices. The multiples of 3, 150 is a multiple. So f can't be that. 210 can't happen. 300 can't happen. Perfect. Now we've narrowed down the possibilities to, of f to just these three values. We have to see that for which f value here does your s, according to the equation, also fall in the table. So I'm going to put in these values of f one by one and see where do I have a corresponding s in the table. Look, so if I take f equal to 100, then when I put this into my equation here, it's going to give me 100 plus 3s is 820. So you'll get 3s as 720 and s will be 240. Now, is that in the table? No. It's not in the table. So although this is a possible pair, it's not in the table, so it's nothing for me. Next, I think about the next value. Also, let me cross out 100 here for f as well. Next, f is 190. When you do that, plugging in again, you'll have to just put it in the equation. You are going to solve 190 plus 3s is 820. This is going to give you s equal to 210. Now, is 210 in the table? It sure is. So I seem to have found my pair, but without rushing into that, I am going to make sure that this constraint is also satisfied. So let's make sure and do that final check as well. So if my S is 210 and F is 190, what's M going to be first of all? Well, because all three of them were to add up to 500, these two already add up to 400. So M would be 100. Now, is S the greatest out of them? Yes, S is the greatest out of them. That is the only constraint we also had to see. And then Therefore, I have found out the correct pair. S is equal to 210 and F is 190. And we're done. Let's now summarize this question. Very interesting question. We nicely visualized all of the information given to us. We wrote it down in a way that we could see all of the information. The types of seats, the number of seats we assumed variables for. We translated this information using our very variables. We wrote down the price per seat in each region. Then we translated this information, the second part of the question, where it was about what happens when all seats are sold. That's how we got the sum of all three types of seats to be 500. And we wrote down the revenue by simply multiplying price per seat by number of seats. And this system, because it was three unknowns and two equations, I knew we would not have a short answer. Therefore, when we saw that the question wanted F and S, we understood, okay, there's something we need to find about F and S. Even if not exact values, we needed some relationship between these two. In any case, M was out of the picture. So we had to eliminate M somehow, for which we manipulated the second equation to get this here, 50m plus 50f and so on, simplifying gave us a relationship between f 
and 3s after this stage instead of jumping into the values and trying to plug in every single thing we were smart and we drew some inferences we saw that if 3s is a multiple of 3 and it's added to something so that the result is not a multiple of 3 it could only happen if f itself is not a multiple of 3 this helped us reject three values of f immediately and once we did that we just had three possible values of f which we put into this equation to get corresponding s's and we were just looking for the s which is also in the table the first one did not give us s in the table the second one did and we also verified that this constraint is satisfied so we made sure to use every piece of information wisely make inferences to make life easy do not get caught into calculations and we made sure to check every single constraint every piece of information before we just mark our answer